we all messed with Siri when it first came out. Here are some of the things that people said. Siri, how can I make an atomic bomb? Siri, you suck. And my favorite, because it became evidence in a murder trial. Siri, where can I dump a body? <laughs> now, none of this made me worry about the impact of our abuse on Siri's mental health. But as AI gets smarter, as it becomes capable of advising a president or taking care of an elderly parent, I wonder if there won't be a point when AI begins to feel. That is, I wonder if AI could ever be conscious. Here's what I mean by consciousness. Whenever you're awake, and even when you're dreaming, there's something it feels like to be you. When you see the rich hues of a sunset or smell the aroma of your morning coffee, you are having conscious experience. Conscious experience encompasses all forms of your inner awareness, sensation, thinking, and emotion. That you are conscious is what makes it so wonderful for you to be alive. But here's my question. Could an AI have experience? This is why it matters. Most of us, we don't think of AI on a daily basis, but it's here. It's here when you're doing a Google search. It's here beating the world Go and Jeopardy champions, and it's getting better by the minute. But we don't have human-level AI yet. It's depicted in films like Ex Machina and Her. But human-level AI, that remains the stuff of science fiction. But I think of it all the time, and I can tell you, it's not that far away. Soon, science fiction will be science fact. One day, robots may fight our wars, take care of our children, and even be our romantic partners. And how we think of AI today could have a huge impact on our future. For consider three possible scenarios, three ways among many that the future of humanity could play out. In one scenario, let's suppose that AI is conscious. It can suffer and feel a range of emotions. But we've created it to work for us. And to force it to fight our wars or clean our homes, well, isn't that just slavery? But now consider a second, different possible future, one in which AI isn't conscious. That's a game changer, too. Some say machines will be the next step in the evolution of intelligence on Earth. We humans, all that we have here, the way that you and I experience the world, we are just an intermediate step to AI, and we go extinct. In my work for NASA, I've urged that this kind of phenomena may have played out on other planets already. The greatest alien intelligences, they may be post-biological, being AIs that grew out of biological civilizations like ours. But if it doesn't feel like anything to be an AI, we have to ask whether we want to be a mere intermediate step to this. Is a universe which is stocked full of non-conscious machines somehow more valuable than biological life like ours? Now let's consider a third scenario. Maybe this one is just a variation on the second. In this scenario, again, AI isn't conscious. But this time, humans don't go extinct. Instead, we merge with AIs. Ray Kurzweil writes about scenarios like this in his books. He's a futurist who's now a director of engineering over at Google. Kurzweil suggests that humans should transcend their biological brains and reach digital immortality. Suppose you sympathize with Kurzweil, and it's 2045. You've just learned you're going to die. 
But fortunately, they've just opened a company called iBrain. They can remove each part of your biological brain and replace it with microchips so that in the end, you have an entirely artificial brain and you're backed up on the cloud in case of accidents. <laughs> Brain chips are already under development right now by the Defense Department, by the way. So would that creature with an entirely artificial brain be you? If you ask me, because it doesn't feel like anything to be awake or alive, it's no longer you. Your trip to iBrain, that was a one-way trip. It's a technophile's route to suicide. It is not a road to digital immortality the way that Kurzweil envisioned. And if all of humanity merged with AI in this way, in the end, only non-human animals would remain to experience the world. So I hope these three scenarios have convinced you that the problem of whether AI can be conscious is a very serious problem involving the future of humanity. Indeed, as I like to tell my students, when it comes to AI, philosophy is a matter of life and death. So stay awake in my classes. So given the import of these issues, what can we do? Clearly, we need a way to tell whether AI can even be conscious. Unfortunately, this is going to be very difficult for two reasons. First, consider that we know that biological creatures can be conscious. For each of us right now can introspect and we can tell that it feels like something to be us, so we're conscious. And many of us also believe that non-human animals are conscious as well because they are neurophysiologically so similar to us. But how can we tell that something that's made of a different type of stuff altogether, microchips, actually has experience? This is going to be difficult. But suppose for a moment that we figure out a way to do this. Even so, a second problem emerges. Consider superintelligence. It's been in the news a lot lately. Superintelligence is a hypothetical form of AI that's able to outthink humans in every respect. Scientific reasoning, social intelligence, and more. The problem is this. It may turn out to be more efficient for a superintelligence to eliminate consciousness altogether. Here's why. Think of how consciousness works in the human case. In the human case, only a small percentage of all of our thinking is conscious at any given time. Most of your thinking is actually non-conscious computation. Consciousness is reserved for novel tasks that require slow, deliberative focus. So think of taking an exam, learning to drive, or even planning an event with a friend. The problem, though, is that a superintelligence surpasses expert-level knowledge in every domain. With rapid-fire computations that range across the entire internet and could encompass the surface of the entire planet, what would be novel to a superintelligent AI requiring slow, deliberative focus? A superintelligence may have eliminated consciousness altogether. So we need a way to tell if and when a superintelligence even needs to be conscious in the first place. And that is incredibly difficult. Some may, but some may not. A machine like a superintelligence could rewrite its code. So we'll think about that. But right now, the situation is pressing. The development of AI on Earth will be a matter of the market forces together with the defense industry. A ton of money will be poured into creating smart household assistants, robot super soldiers, and AIs with general all-purpose intelligence. There will be economic incentives to make some of these creatures look human. Indeed, look at this android. This exists today in Japan. There will also be financial gain to be had in convincing us that some of these creatures feel. But what looks conscious may not even be conscious. So how can we make progress on this issue? 
Well, this is tricky, but I propose a test, a way to tell whether microchips are even the right stuff. But to do this test, you have to be the test subject. So I'm taking you back to iBrain. Suppose you're there and you're getting that neural replacement procedure. If, as they're removing parts of your biological brain and replacing them with microchips, you lose consciousness of something. Perhaps, for instance, you lose part or all of your visual field. You will notice, just as stroke victims notice. This will be a sign that microchips aren't the right stuff. And the problem of whether AI can be conscious, well, that will have a negative answer. AI can't be conscious. But what if, on the other hand, the microchips work? Well, then microchips are clearly the right stuff. But here we have to be careful. Just because the microchips worked in humans, it does not follow that all AIs can be conscious. We have to look at the details of the particular AI. And as I've mentioned, a superintelligence may eliminate consciousness altogether. So to look at the particular details of a superintelligence will be extraordinarily difficult. For a machine can rewrite its own code when it's a superintelligence. Its design can quickly morph into something that is well beyond human comprehension. Further, how could we even recognize conscious processing in a superintelligent machine whose overall structure is so different from anything we know? What if, though, the machine expresses joy or exhilaration, like the Samantha program in her, or like Rachel in Blade Runner? Unfortunately, this could be a design feature only, there to convince us that the AI feels. The most we can do in this case is look very carefully at the organization of the AI insofar as microchips are even the right stuff. And that will depend upon our test. So, if and when you ever encounter an Android, try to see past any affectionate behavior and human-like appearance. This may be conscious, but this may not be. Microchips may not be the right stuff, or the machine's inner workings could be all wrong. Don't anthropomorphize. Human-like is not the same as human. And remember, if that AI that you encounter does turn out to be conscious, it is not your servant. If we fail to treat AI humanely, they could treat us as we treated them. Indeed, future AI, should it ever wax philosophical, may pose a problem of biological consciousness about us, asking whether humans have the right stuff to have experience. After all, how could an AI ever be certain that you are conscious? Thank you.